don't have handouts, but I'm going to pass around um, this. And if you want a copy of my handout, you can go ahead and write your name and your email, and I will email uh, this to you. Okay. So, um, what what our presentation is, and Mickey Meadows isn't here uh, right now, um, but we've worked together on we've done some research with youth. Um, and my primary interest is engaging youth with technology. So um, I focused my, some of my most recent research has, has centered on developing online programs and evaluating online programs that engage youth, okay? Um, I'm currently at the U of I right now, but I worked here at Eastern for a few years and um, I'm actually a graduate of Eastern, so that's my background. And Mickey, um, one of my colleagues, uh, was actually my mentor here at Eastern, some of you who know um, Mickey Sherwood, and uh, she teaches here in the School of Family and Consumer Sciences. So when I talk about engaging youth with technology, um, I'm really going to be focusing on one program that we've uh, that we've done, and it's called Career Skillet. And the Career Skillet is focused on these four main things: so social skills, networking, the job application process, life management, and um, I'll talk about more about what that includes in just a minute. But um, and then family. Um, Family and Consumer Sciences. So it's specific to Family and Consumer Sciences students. Uh, there's information on there, on the website, uh, that is specific to um, all different uh, concentrations. So we've got Human Development and Family Studies, uh, Consumer Studies, Merchandising. So we've got I think, six different concentrations. Talk about job earnings, what they do, what kind of jobs they can get. Um, in that area of family and consumer sciences, what types of degrees they need, so forth. Um, so it's, we believe that the content is comprehensive uh, so that emerging adults can gain a better understanding of the relationship between their social and personal life and professional skills. So why, first of all, why emerging adults, why career skills? Um, unemployment rates. Number one, uh, unemployment rates among youth have been rising. Uh, it's also the age of identity exploration and um, also instability. So Jeffrey Arnett, um, who developed the theory of emerging adulthood, um, talks a lot about how uh, emerging adults, which is 18 to 25 year olds, um, explore uh, their identity development and that's in three main areas, love, work, and worldviews. Uh, worldviews being religion, politics, and things like that. So who are we, who, who do we want to be, and so forth. And granted, not all emerging adults have that luxury of um, just wandering around and figuring out who they want to be. Uh, but at the same time, overall, many of them do, and even more of them experience the instability. Um, and it's also, the instability is related to some of their identity exploration. So there's a lot of changes, moving away from home, independence from uh, parents, um, sometimes people get married and have children during this time, what have you. So it's, it's uh, more than any other period of the lifespan, um, it's characterized as instability and change. Um, also, you know, there's low retention rates among first time <coughs> college students and especially among um, first generation college students. And a lot of the skills that they need to be successful in um, college go along with some of the skills that we are that are related to some of the skills um, that they need for their career and professional development. Uh, and according to many adults, many youth um, lack the knowledge, skills, and attitudes that optimize their work and job related opportunities. So for example, um, a lot of times you'll hear, well, youth these days or um, college students these days, they don't, you know, um, and one of the things that I've heard a lot is um, that they um, have this sense of entitlement. Um, so there's a really big disconnect between what um, the relationship between the emerging adults or the youth, uh, this includes adolescents as well, and uh, their relationships with their bosses, supervisors, professors, and so forth. Um, I could talk a lot more about that, but I'll just leave it at that. So 
programs um, largely, when I started doing research in some of these areas, specifically with online programs, websites, things like that that are developed for emerging adults, um, college students, most of them are focused on uh, problem behaviors, alcohol, smoking, um, addictions, uh, eating disorders, things like that. There's, I mean, there's a lot of reasons for that. So those are things that adults see the need for, um, one. Also funding sources. A lot of times they're quicker uh, to fund um, problem behaviors than they are um, programs that focus on positive youth development. So positive youth development, uh, that centers on promoting youth competencies, skills, um, using their skills and abilities in the program development and, and really pulling out their strengths in that way. And some of the research shows, so for example, some of the research with the 4-H programs, Richard Lerner, some of his research, shows that by focusing on um, the positive youth, taking a positive youth development approach, you can actually prevent some of the problem behaviors. But again, there's still a large focus on problem behaviors um, because uh, funders don't, it's harder to get money for prevention, um, easier for intervention, I guess. But anyway, so, but we wanted to focus on career skills for um, youth and that being taking a positive youth development approach, helping them build competencies in this area. Um, and so I said that that's a lot of times what adults believe that youth need. So yeah, they have this sense of entitlement. They need, they need this, they need this. But also, when asking youth um, what they want and what they need to learn about, um, career skills was one of the main things that they have said. And this is in some of the research that we've done. So career skills, life skills, social skills, politics, um, religion and romantic relationships. Very much consistent with what Jeffrey Arnett says that they're exploring their identity in, right? The, the three areas, love, work, and worldviews. So in asking them, this is what they say. Work and career was consistent across everyone. They all want to learn about it. Um, they want, so for example, Alma said, I want something that will help um, us figure out what it's going to be like when you actually get a career. They want to hear like advantages, disadvantages of a job, um, people who are professionals in the field, what they have to say about their careers. Um, Alex said, everyone really makes such a big, um, such a huge deal about networking, but and so it's something, but it's something that uh, people want you to do with very little instruction on how to do it. So for example, people might say, oh, networking is really important, get out there and do it. And so they hear this word and they know that, but what is it, what does that mean, and how exactly do I do, I do this? I feel bad, but I don't know, I don't want to tell you every single time. I know it's distracting while we're in the middle, we'll figure it out. Um, so some of them do know that they need, uh, they need some of these things. They want to learn about careers, but they don't know exactly what they need to learn about. Um, so, uh, for example, Alex on social skills. So when I asked him, so when other people were saying they wanted to learn about social skills, I asked him, so what do you think about social skills? How, you know, how are your social skills? Well, I think I'm pretty good, things like that, he said. But other people my age would benefit from lessons on respectful dialogue. He's very articulate. Um, uh, and then later in the conversation, um, he was, I asked him to describe it, a, an issue that he had had with someone or how he would handle conflict. And he said, was talking about an issue that he had with the professor. He said, so I blew up in class after getting a 95 instead of a 98 because my teacher would not listen to reason. After being sent to the dean, I kept up a very confrontational and angry tone towards this author angry tone towards this authority figure and her ear interference in my personal life. So you see where this, this, this type of conversation might hurt him, not only in college, but how is that gonna play out um, if the same conversation in, in the workforce with his boss? Do you think that professor's gonna give him a reference? No. no. <laughs> Probably not, he's gonna struggle. But the bad thing is, thanks, he was actually, you know, he was really smart um, and uh, had a lot of wonderful characteristics, but there, uh, there was something um, missing there that he was lacking, right? So you can go ahead, thanks. So based on some of these conversations with you, so not only did they all wanna learn about work and careers, but these were the, the four main themes that came up, um, that they wanted to learn about 
or that there was some sort of contradiction um, that we believed that they might struggle when working with adults, such as the example with social skills. So we developed um, the main framework for this website, Career Skillet, based on these conversations with the emerging adults. So social skills, communicating with professors, communicating with um, bosses and so forth, that's nonverbal, verbal communication. Life management, so managing um, work, school, finances, stress, time. Um, these are a lot of things that they were struggling with. Again, you get that instability coming in and all these changes. Um, it's the first time they've had uh, to actually deal with um, managing their finances, uh, their time in that regard. Um, and a lot of them would talk about how um, they have good time management skills, but then they would also turn around and talk about how they knew that they spent way too much time on Facebook. I mean, some of them hours and hours a day on Facebook. Um, so, I don't know. Um, it's interesting. Like I said, I could talk a lot about that whole research process. But uh, networking, I already talked about that, and the job application process. So resumes, cover letters, and a lot of that came from more um, senior students, like the juniors and seniors, when they're actually getting to the point like where they're um, preparing for internships, they know they're going to be applying for jobs and so forth. Um, but uh, freshmen and sophomores don't really worry about these types of things as much. Um, and then again, uh, we wanted to focus it on uh, for family and consumer science students. So one of the other things that came out of this research, so not only the, co the types of content that they were interested in, so again, work, <coughs> careers, life skills, things like that, um, but what types of things engage them. Um, and so the, two, the difference between these two boxes is the one in your upper left corner is um, techn technological tools. The one down here is the delivery style. So the technological tools that they prefer for online, like what, what do they search for online? What types of things do they read when it's sent to them? What do they ignore, whatever. Um, Social, social media, social networking sites, namely Facebook, um, was probably where they spend most of their time, what engages them the most. Um, blogs, videos was another big one. Some were um, very interested in games. They either were interested in games or they were not. Um, questions, questions and answers. So a lot of times they, um, when they're searching for an answer to a question uh, about life, school, whatever, they will just Google it and um, go to ask or Yahoo, um, whatever answers they get. Um, they use their mobile phones um, a lot to access this information. Music was another one, forums. Uh, so, um, and then as far as uh, the delivery style goes, entertain, entertaining was used. So why do you use Facebook? Why? Well, because it's entertaining. I do, you know, why do you use, why did you watch this video on YouTube that you were talking about? Um, it's entertaining. By far, that was the most, um, the biggest thing that they said. And I realized that in education, a lot of times, you know, and actually one of um, my best mentors here at Eastern uh, said a long time ago is, you know, you realize that it's not your job to entertain students. Um, but my argument with her is that I know I know it's not my job to entertain students, but it is part of my job to engage them because they're not going to learn if you don't engage them. And to engage them, sometimes you have to entertain them. Um, so, um, working with mentors and, um, and uh, getting to know people like that. I'm trying to think of other examples without getting off too much. They weren't real, they don't want it to be fake or after school special-ish, um, that was an exact quote. Uh, developmentally relevant, uh, so they don't want something that seems like it's for adolescents, and we actually had them to review a couple of other programs that were um, on relationships, and it seemed too young for them, and when they even used the word teens, but yet they're college students, they want nothing to do with it as soon as they see that word. It's like, this is not for us, this is for younger people. Um, and even, you know, I have an 11 year old, but she came home from school last week um, and they talked to them about drugs. So she's only in sixth grade, but at this point, they've already talked to them about this for, for a while now, and she's bored. She's tired of hearing the same old things. She said um, it was boring to her.
her because, oh, they just talked about um, how it's bad for our bodies. I was like, well, what do you want? To, what do you want? She was like, I want some really great pictures um, of like before and after, like something that's going to sit there and freak everyone out, you know? And so, and why, to some level, I mean, although it's at someone else's expense, it's entertaining, you know, to them, and it also it makes it very real for them, and um, it's just something that's almost above their cognitive level, you know what I mean? So it's better to go higher than mundane and boring, so you can go ahead and switch that. Well, here's some examples. So Alex again said, fake or after school specialish. Um, Rachel said, I'm not gonna listen to a talk if it's not exciting and entertaining to me. Um, Maria, and she's specifically talking about sex education, um, is it feels like the same old thing by the time you get to college, so no one really pays attention to it anymore. Um, I keep using quotes from Alex because like I said, he really could um, articulate things well, and I love his quotes. Um, another thing that they don't like, so a lot of times people will, people are very quick to say, and a lot of the reviews and a lot of the papers on developing and evaluating online programs, one of the very first paragraphs that always says, online programs, um, one of the benefits of online programs is that you can reach more people. Um, and that is true, you do have the capability of doing that, but if you're not engaging them, if you're not doing things, if you're not keeping it updated, um, they're not gonna pay attention to it anymore. So if your sole goal is to reach more people and then be done with that and not have them to keep coming back for more, then, um, then that would be successful. But ours, with helping them with career skills, that's not our goal, um, because we think that they need to continue having this content over time in order for, for it to be successful. So with Career Skillet, and um, I'll explain the process of how we uh, developed let me make sure, of how we developed it in just a minute. But we have tried to incorporate some things that are um, at least somewhat engaging. We have a lot of work to do, um, and we just started it. Um, in June, it actually went live. So it's gonna very, it's gonna be a slow process. And this time next year, we'll have a lot more content. Hopefully, we'll have been able to um, potentially get some grant funding and be able to do more because it does cost money. To the more interactive that you want to get, um, the more money it costs to build things like that and to keep it updated. Um, so, but for now, we've tried to do things, um, incorporate what the youth have said that they're interested in. So they really, it's not just any video. Um, they, again, like they like the videos that are entertaining. They like um, popular YouTube videos, um, something that um, has perhaps gone viral that they could share and discuss it with other people. Um, TED Talks is a big one. They appreciate a lot of TED Talks. So um, we've tried to incorporate TED Talks, YouTube videos. Um, and then also humor. Um, Mickey actually, in my opinion, she writes some of the best articles um, because I am probably a little bit biased, but I think she's hilarious. I don't, I find her entertaining. I'm not sure that our emerging adults or college students who are engaged with the site find her entertaining, but this is an article that she wrote. And so we've also, I also put this up because we've got, we share it on LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook. Um, again, it's a, it's a process. Ideally, we would be able to get more than 19 likes and we would have, you know, thousands of people who have liked our Facebook page and we'd be re reaching more people. But as of right now, we've just been starting pretty slow. Um, you can go ahead and turn that. Um, and a big, big, big piece of our model is participatory. So I don't think that it would be up to me or Mickey to say this is um, this is what you need to learn about. We know you want to learn about career skills. I'm going to tell you this is exactly how it should be done. Um, we could, but um, we don't know everything. Um, so we've got some people who are uh, career counselors, actually, who are contributors um, to the site, and they will write articles. We also, we also have FC, other FCS professionals. So Mickey and I, our area is family services. We've got some folks who are dietetics hospitality, um, a lot of the people that are here in the School of Family Consumer Sciences at Eastern have been contributing consumer studies. So then that way they can say, um, here are the professional organizations that maybe they could be involved in um, for consumer studies majors, things like that. So we've got information that's specific to each concentration 
that is the benefit of having contributor, contributors who have expertise in those areas. Uh, the other piece of the contributor part, and I, this is most important to me, coming from um, developmental science, positive youth development um, philosophies, I guess, is that um, students have engaged in developing a framework and ongoing content, um, and professionals have worked with these students to provide guidance um, along the way. So actually, um, so the four areas, so social skills, networking, the job application process, and life management, all of that came with our research asking um, the college students what they wanted to learn about. And um, the college students came up with the name, Career Skillet, so for anyone who thinks that it's cheesy or whatever, um, <laughs> fine, but uh, they liked it, um, and not everyone does, but it was just because this group I had, um, six of them working with me last semester, they agreed on this, came up with it, they voted on the logo, they um, um, talked about different topic areas that they wanted to learn about, um, I worked with them, answered their questions, they helped to write the articles, so if you go on there, and a lot of times the ones that you see guest author, um, those are the ones who, the students who have participated and who have written the articles um, themselves, gone and found the research that backs up the information that they're providing and so forth. A lot of them have made um, infographics. Did you do one? I thought so, and I saw your name tag. <laughs> so, and you worked with Mickey yes. on one, and it was um, excellent. It was on service learning. Is that the one you did, or which one? really great and I love seeing it and to me like um, that's really what it's all about and you know what is the interesting part of that and not really intentional but what happens is a lot of times when the students will write um, the articles and then we link it to Facebook or whatever and then they'll share it with their friends and say hey look what I did or go like this um, my students at U of I actually have a competition because kind of a long story, but one of the guys in my group was dating one of the girls in my group. He broke up with her, and I think she's on a mission um, to make him look bad. Which I don't blame her, um, but anyway, uh, so she's went on and had a lot of her friends to like, and so this, that's how the, this word of mouth advertising, I think, is probably what's going to help us a lot, and that comes from them, not from us, you know? Um, although that you do say that a lot of times they do want advice from people who are older and who are more experienced um, in the field, uh, but it's in order to develop something that is truly going to engage them, we believe that just bring them to the table and have them to tell you and have them to help you to, to do that. So having faith in them and their abilities and skills. Um, so I keep talking out of turn here, but so this is this is how the professionals have contributed um, by providing their areas of expertise. Um, so uh, we have professionals in consumer studies, career and technical education, um, entrepreneurship, and um, actually we don't have a ton of articles on entrepreneurship. If any of you. Um, are entrepreneurs and you uh, would like to contribute, uh, we would more, more than happy uh, to take you on. Um, but anyway, so we've just got information in all of these different areas. Um, and this just makes me think too, uh, the alcohol dilemma one is one that I wrote. Um, but that's something that in this group of students that I have, I've kind of worked with them and mentored them. And one of them has, had asked me twice, should I drink or should I not drink at these conferences? Because when we went to these national conferences, there were a group of people in our department who were drinking alcohol. And um, he wasn't sure. He felt kind of out of place for not drinking. But he, you know, at the same time, he didn't know if it would be professional or not. So I decided to answer his question in an article um, for other people. So a lot of the content um, comes from their questions, even if I've written them. So.
Um, this is an example of when I said infographic, what an infographic is. Now, maybe now that you've seen one, if those of you who are like, what's an infographic? They're actually pretty common uh, because, and they're becoming more and more common. And some of the um, some of the literature they say that more and more people are going to a minimalist perspective, where they have less words, more pictures, and things like that. So that's what um, that's the purpose of that. So they can get some sort of visual. This is an example of a video that they did. So last semester, I had the students to go out. They interviewed professionals, whoever they wanted to interview, whatever field they were in. They uh, interviewed them and asked them questions about what they were looking for with students. If they were professionals in the field, they asked them. So some were professors, some were professionals. If they were professionals in the field, they asked them what they look for and during the interview process, what types of things they like, what types of things, what were their pet peeves, um, what is professionalism was one of the questions. What is professionalism? Because a lot of times people will just say, be professional, dress adequately. What is that, right? So they went and um, I asked them what it is. And so we put the videos together. I had another student who happened to be um, a really good video editor, and so he put them all together, put all the names of the professionals in the video and so forth. So um, in, in that particular video, if you happen to watch it, you would see that they, um, the youth themselves are, or the emerging adults are interviewing them, and um, yeah, so they can hear their voices on there and so forth. Another way that we've engaged um, them is that we had them to ask all the questions. So one, one of some of the research I've done, um, when I had the youth to develop, to evaluate the um, online program for relationships, some of them said, these questions are bogus. Nobody my age would ever ask that. You could tell that a bunch of adults sat around, wrote the questions, and then wrote the answers because they made it seem like that the youth were asking the questions. Anyway. So we had them to, well, what do you want to know? So we had them to ask the questions. And the contributors have come in, um, or three of us mainly, have um, Dr. Burns and Dr. Sherwood and I have answered some of the questions. Um, right now, I've got a group of um, students who are work who's working with me. Mickey's had several students in her classes that um, she has been working with on some of the articles and the infographics, videos, and so forth. Um, Dr. Burns' evaluation class, were any of you in that class this year, by chance, her graduate um, evaluation class? No? Okay. Um, well, her graduate students in an evaluation class designed an evaluation. So we really, since this is just the beginning, we just started this, we don't, we're, we're not gonna do some, you know, I don't know how many of you are really into research, like hardcore research, but we're not gonna do um, an impact evaluation, a uh, randomized control trial or anything like this at this point, at this stage in our program development. Um, but what we do wanna know is what, are the, what features do they like? What do they don't like? What do, would they like to see more of? Um, and so we ask them questions like that. And I told the students what I wanted to, what I would like to know. They designed the questions, had rationale for all the questions and so forth. Then we sent it out um, and we had about 150 um, people to participate in that survey. So we're putting those results together now. Um, we're also just continuing to develop more articles, pictures, and videos. Um, my goal was to get, make sure that we have at least something posted um, two or three times a week. For the most part, we've been pretty consistent with that except for the last month I fell behind a little bit. Um, but I hope to continue that, to at least post two to three times a week so they know that they're consistently getting information. Um, we um, also, again, want to work on expanding our reach through social media, so a lot of this word of mouth advertising um, is huge. One of my students had someone to retweet his um, infographic or his article on um, Twitter. And I am actually awful at Twitter, so any of you that are students that love Twitter, or if, even if you're not a student, um, I'm terrible with hashtags. My students tell me that mine are cheesy and silly, so I just stopped, and I don't even put hashtags anymore. So I could use some help in that regard. Um, and then also we're working on a Nailed It, Failed It. So in my group of students, I had them to, um, we're trying it out, where we have videotaped them, and they're answering interview questions, um, how they think it should be answered. And then other people are gonna go in and rate it, nailed it, failed it. 
um, and contributors are going to come in and say, um, you did a really good job with this, maybe you could work on this, maybe you could work on eye contact, maybe, you know, so forth. So that's the next phase, um, and I wanted to try it out with my students who agreed to do it, because I'm not really sure how that would make, how that's going to make them feel if a bunch of people say that they failed it. I don't want it to be, um, mean or, you know, condescending anyway, but they said that they would be up for it. Um, one of them said that he would find it entertaining. Uh, so, anyway, uh, so that's one of the next phases that we're doing. Um, another way, too, that we have been evaluating this process is we've been watching the growth. Um, we can see how many people uh, access the site through Google Analytics. We can also, um, we can see, tell who are unique visitors, at least they've used the same, you know, computer systems or whatever. Um, we can see page views, we can see where they're coming from. Um, we have had people from different countries. Most of them, though, are from uh, around this area. So, um, from Illinois. Anyway, um, go ahead. Uh, we have, so not only Facebook, and, and just as an example of how fast the word of mouth thing goes. So I posted um, two students' work, and Mickey posted one within the last week. I took that screenshot a week ago, and now we have 194, 196 likes. 195 minutes ago. Oh, did you just like? ago. <laughs> I just liked you. Oh, <laughs> yes. Yay. Um, so anyway, the, uh, um, so, that is though because the students were spreading the word and like I said, one of the girls in particular who posted an article um, wanted her friends to like it. So, um, Twitter, um, we only have 25 followers, uh, probably because of my terrible hashtags. Um, so yeah, we're working on this. We've got YouTube videos of, um, we have, um, Mickey just opened up a Pinterest page because we decided, well, we've got all these infographics. Um, there might be some FCS teachers or different people who um, could use this in different ways. So um, we've got that, and um, then we also have uh, 71 members on LinkedIn. So you can engage how, I mean, you can kind of get an idea of how you're engaging people by the number of likes that you get on the social media, by the number of people that comment, so forth. Some people don't do it anyway, they just, you know, they see it, but they don't like it. So it's hard to tell, but you can, Facebook, you can also look at Facebook insights, and you can tell how many people it's reached, uh, um, and so forth. So there's a lot of different ways that we're evaluating this process. Some of from the evaluation that Dr. Burns' class did, um, some of their favorite features were, and these are all undergraduate college students who have take who were doing this. Um, a lot of them were FCS students, some of them were not. Um, were the social skills and networking articles, uh, the videos, the pictures, the variety of um, content um, and information that was specific to family consumer sciences. Um, because some of them said that they really couldn't find that information after. Um, some of their least favorite features were too long. Um, so we can think that sometimes that we're writing really good articles and, oh, I need to put this too, because this is really important, but it's too much reading. They don't want to read it. They skim it. Um, so we either need to work on highlighting, bullet pointing, or just, you know, deleting content, doing more infographics, things like that. Uh, they also just want more content, um, so it would be nice if they could go somewhere and have all their questions answered, um, or just to be able to update it more frequently, but like I said, we're just doing what we can right now. Um, and they, another thing that they said is they want more content visible on one page. If you actually go to the website, uh, it was designed to be, uh, you can, to be accessible uh, via your phone, um, but it's not, it doesn't really work as good as uh, I had hoped it would or it should, so that's something that we want to work on. But when, um, a, with the content and other areas, when you look at it on a laptop or a desktop, uh, there's too much open white space, um, so they have to scroll down, they have to click on to go to the next page, and they want to be able to see all the articles right there and then click on it if they want to read. Um, article. So more selection, kind of like hey, our, for those of you that are on TED Talks, sometimes you go and you can see a whole big screen of information and choose the video that you want to watch, something like that. So anyway, um, okay, you can go ahead and switch. 
So we're continuing to look at how we can expand. Um, and we do want to do more interactive features. Like I said, a lot of this though is expensive. So even the video editing. So my student that did a lot of the video editing last semester, um, he's actually a mechanical engineering major. Uh, I have no idea how he ended up working with me. He was just interested on some of the stuff. But anyway, um, he's actually super busy and he doesn't have time this semester. So I've got all these videos that need to be edited and sitting there. But if I'm going to do it, I need to, need to find a student who's super savvy, figure it out myself, or um, pay someone to do it. So it does cost time and money and, you know, to do all of that. So again, it's an ongoing process. We're working on it. Hopefully by this time next year, it will be significantly improved in that regard. Um, I would like to do more things like where they go somewhere and the, a scenario pops up. They have to answer questions um, and engage in that way, too. Um, I hope to continue to have students working for um, with uh, Mickey and I um, and then whoever else because again this is really I think that that contributes to um, the majority of our, our success this far. Um, I would also like to develop content that's specific for students in high school. I wanted to start with college students because again I believe that Developing more difficult content, it's easier to go to develop content that's more um, difficult at a difficult, more complex level, I guess, first, and then go down if necessary. But I think most of our content is pretty um, it's simplified enough that uh, high school students can get it. I would just like to put it in a different format and make it specific to them because a lot of the content is written and it will say in you know, it references college and so forth. So I'd like to reference some of their, their experiences. Um, continue to evaluate it and um, get more professionals to contribute. So if any of you have expertise um, in a given area, uh, you have some time, you, would, you have some, some things you would like to say or whatever, we're more than welcome to have you students um, and uh, professionals. Uh, yeah. Any questions about that? Can you go to the website? I got to your Facebook page with the Let me see what it looks like. One likes on Facebook. From you guys? Yeah. Awesome. I don't know why. Like I actually became obsessed with now watching how many likes we get. It's super fun. So when I said that all of the students who um when I was talking to them like, wait, you just said that you were yeah. Good with time yeah. management, but then you said you spent eight hours on Facebook. But I could totally see because it becomes uh, addicting, yeah. Well, at that age, it's addicting. Well, at any age. Unless it, you get into some of those games and then you're in trouble. But. Yeah. My father in law's obsession with Farmville. Um, <laughs> oh, I, no, I, 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 I've worked through that one, and I've worked through that monster one, too. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay, so this is the opening page of a site. Sometimes when you go with the Internet Explorer, so again, these are some of the things you want to work on, but um, this About Us page looks a little... Little things that we do to try to engage. 
probably can't hear it. Um, do you recognize the song though? Yeah. What is it? Um, why don't you get a job? Why don't you get a job, right? So I actually made this video and I thought I was being super creative, trying to reach the college students, and then I showed it to one of my students who's like, I don't get it. And so I was like, okay, fine. So, you know, I could keep trying, but my point with engaging them is that it really, I need them to tell me what they are going to get. So thank you for, yes, of course. Um, so this is the part that's messed up on Internet Explorer. Um, whatever this, I don't know why it looks like this, but these are um, some of the contributors. And I'll show you, which, what do you want to see? You want to see some social skills articles? questions, um, but uh, I, this was stemmed from a conversation with a student, so um, I told him that sometimes people lie when they say that, because, I mean, and when it comes to content and stuff, it's not a stupid question, but do you have a stapler is, you know, something that is probably going to annoy your professor, right? So it's a social skill, you know, that when you come, you come prepared for class, <laughs> prepare to turn in your assignment um, and don't ask the professor if they have any office supplies with them. So, <laughs> right, Christina? <laughs> anyway, uh, so just helping them to be aware and think of this thing. So, this is what I was talking about. There's too much open space that they don't like. They want there to, to be like a bunch of the articles right there and to click on it. Um, so, we'll work on that at some point. Um, so we've got eye contact, generational differences. Um, and I come from the approach to that. I do think that I know a lot of times people think that it's all youth or emerging adults, but I'm one of their biggest advocates in that. It's not always. I think that it's just a disconnect between youth and emerging adults. And so having them both understand the, or I mean, not youth and emerging adults, emerging adults and older adults understand the gener generational differences and to be able to work together uh, can help. Um, trying to think. This is the one that I thought was funny, some of you may not, uh, that Mickey wrote. Oops. Sure, fix the internet or fix my lack of skills with this computer. So at the beginning, she starts out. Um, do how many of you know Dr. Sherwood? No. Okay. Well, she's kind of um, sarcastic sometimes. But anyway. So she said, for the past few years, I've been teaching two night classes in a row. The first class met from 4 to 6.30, the second 7 to 9. That's a really long time to be on your feet. I really wanted to change my schedule, something that was not so to something not that was physically difficult. So what do you think I did? I had my mother to call my assistant <laughs> chairperson. And so some, you know, I, I don't, like, that could be one that, is borderline too sarcastic. So if you've ever done that before, is that going to offend you? Maybe. Um, if you've ever had, you know, your parents to get involved in an issue or whatever. At the same time, um, would you think? Would you be more likely to think about it next time if you've read that? I don't know. Hopefully. Um, so we all have different styles of writing, um, and that's okay. One of the things that the, the emerging adults liked is um, variety. So I think that it's a good thing. Can we send it out to all our parents, like, anonymously? 
<laughs> at the high school level because we'd like for them to get so, out. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and even at that level, it is important to start, you know, for educating them. for yourself. Mm -hmm. um, but it's not necessarily their fault that they don't know that, though. You know, I mean, there's a reason why they are used to going to their parents. Um, so, anyway, these are a few that students have written. Um, this is one uh, about sleep and getting enough sleep. And I actually, she is so good. I did not even edit it at all. Um, I thought she did such a, she's such a great writer. Um, so anyway, um, I don't know. What do you want to see on here? Anything in particular? You want to look at the Family Consumer Sciences pages? Feedback in this context would be a little bit different because they know they're setting themselves up for it, sure. right? Um, but I think that, that I mean, it depends on a variety of situations. So in my relationship with them, because I've worked with this same group, now they're back for more, I'm actually really quite blunt with them. Sure. Um, and so one time, you know, like, People, like one time I had one of them to email me, and say, he, he works for another professor and he's scared to ask this other professor um, for questions, any questions. Uh, so he asked me first, so he can try to look good in front of this other guy. Uh, but that's only because I have a relationship with him, right? One of the questions he asked me was, and I would tell him if he was sitting right here, he, he would not care. Um, he's going to grad school and he's going to be really successful, um, I know, but uh, so I just feel like it's my job to tell him because I built that relationship with him first. He said, well, when I'm sending out mailers for this other guy's work before, I'm sending out a bunch of, a big group of mass mailers. How do I address um, the person if it's, uh, I don't know, I can't remember what he asked, under a specific context. So a lot of times you write Mr. and Mrs. James Smith, and he wanted to know how to write it in another way. Um, I said, just so you know, um, I, like, I don't mind like, answering this at all, but this is an example of something that you could Google first, then you could email me and say, is this right? Versus just asking me so I can look it up and then do it. You know, So take, and take that initiative on your own first and if you do that, it's fine. Like, ask, no professor, unless they're really mean, is going to care if you're asking them to, you know. But you show that you've you've done this initiative work, sure. first. You've done your homework first. So, but again, having that relationship with him, um, he does doesn't mind the feedback from me. He takes it very well, and I've been pretty hard on him. Um, this kid in particular, um, but he takes it fine. And he is learning from his mistakes most of the time. And when he hasn't, I said, okay, you asked me this like a year ago. Do you remember what I said a year ago? Because um, this is something you need to know. And he'll laugh, but I bet he won't ask me again because I brought it to his attention that I'm aware of the fact that he's already asked me that question twice, right? So I'm pretty blunt, um, but it, not everybody, everybody has to have their own personality and style. And I'm not saying that I'm, awesome because I mean who knows maybe I am offending people but I don't think they would like this specifically this group would continue to come back and work with me um, next semester will be three semesters they're already registering for classes and they've registered to work again so um, I don't think they would keep coming back for more if I was terrible right um, here's the family consumer sciences page it's a really that's a good question though say another part of that with the relationship is that I take, um, I allow them to give me a hard time just as much as I can give them a hard time and I can take it. So um, one example, this wasn't with this group of students that I can think of is I was trying, sometimes I try to be cool and I'm not really that cool. 
they're always quick to tell me that, but I, they were talking about a concert or something, and I said, oh yeah, you'll be sitting there waving your lighters, right? Um, this has nothing to do with work and careers, but my point is the relationship. And they were like, uh, no one brings lighters to concerts anymore. So he tried thinking that I was, this is a super good opportunity for me to be really cool. I was like, actually, you know what? I just saw Aerosmith. I went to an Aerosmith concert, um, Motley Crue, and you know what? People had lighters. And they said, uh, yeah, and there were probably um, mullet families there, too. <laughs> yeah, I guess maybe they're right. You know, <laughs> so it's okay. Fine. Make fun of me. You know, so that piece is about that relationship. I don't know. I'm so sorry to just internet it. Does anybody else have any other questions while I'm waiting? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.